Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's still morning. Yeah, barely. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've already been on our bike ride. Yes. And stuff. We've already had breakfast. Yeah. We've been on our bike ride. We've taken care of a couple of other things, and yeah. here we are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take my glasses off, and it's going to go shh on my microphone. By the way, this uh, somebody commented a while back. Uh, one of our acquaintances and said, you know, what's that tumor on the side of your head? And that's that's my wireless microphone. I found that it works better there because my voice is so booming when I try to wear it down in here. We have issues with uh, with it being too boomy. Boomy. Yeah, I don't like it. You like it? No. Well, you don't notice it, but I do. I'm not the video editor. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, it's a beautiful morning here. Uh, Fourth of July weekend is coming up real quick. Yes. Yeah, real yes, quick. It is. But anyway, uh, I guess in the latest news, uh, we had a stray kitty show up. Yes. And he, we determined that it's a he. Yeah, he won't let us get real close, but yeah. he's not like a feral cat. He's not scared to death of humans. He's just yeah. nervous. He's a little sweetheart. He really is. Yes, mm -hmm. but Delilah is not yeah. impressed. <laughs> not. No. She's not having it. So we have issues with that that we're having to deal mm -hmm. with, but uh, he sure is awful cute. And So it basically what we're trying to do right now, I guess, is get him to where he will come to us and feel more comfortable with us. Evidently, someone has been mean to him or something. We don't know. Well, what I'm doing is trying to get him comfortable with us so we can hopefully find him a home. Right. I called the local humane societies, and they're all full, so they wouldn't yeah. take him, even if I could capture him, which I think I could pretty easily here in another few days. Well, he did kind of sort of let me pick him up the other day, but then he got real nervous and tried to get away, and I ended up with a couple of minor scratches. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's great. Major, but <laughs> we've already named him. Well, our daughter named him yesterday when she came out. Yes, uh, isn't named, that sweet? Named him Oscar. <laughs> if we had enough room to keep two kitties, uh, his name would be Samson and Delilah would be Delilah. Yeah, but... But, but Delilah is... Oh, man. Plus, geez. I don't want to travel with two cats. <laughs> and we have no way of <laughs> mm. traveling with two cats, and we know that. We, no. We've talked about this. Yes, sir. Yes, we have. <laughs> anyway, what we thought we would talk about today, uh, our projects will, that we have been promising will begin next week. We should be getting our van back sometime oh, next so. week. Yeah, with everything all done on that, and we've got some projects on it. Got some projects on the trailer. But uh, we're just kind of cap, going to kind of cap the the month off with this discussion about our experiences being a Corps of Engineer campground park attendant in the past. It's it's another form of work camping, uh -huh. and um, depends upon the campground that you're at. Right, it, it's good or it can be right. Very stressful. <laughs> yeah, but let's begin with, there's two kinds, there's two ways you can go, uh, at least for now. Right. Uh, one is to be a contracted park attendant, and there are, uh, you have to submit a bid, you have to figure out, you know, uh, try to get a, uh, pick out the campground that you would like to be a park attendant at, you know, find out what the responsibilities would that be there, and then submit a bid and uh, depending on which district you're involved with. And most of know. those bids, they start getting them in November and they make a decision around February. Right. Anyway, that's this one that we're about. Yeah, the one that one. we're familiar with. Right. The area that we're familiar with. So and it could vary from, from state to state, area to area. Location you know? to location, yeah. I'm sure. And then of course, uh, and when you do that, your con contract, and, and I've seen, I used to think that you had to work a full 40 hours, but I've also, we've also seen in the past where those that did a contract, contracted for fewer hours, and of course their, their bid was priced accordingly. Right. Because of that. So right. there, uh, there is that. So um, now, if you're drawing Social Security and you want a free uh, place to live, the one that we like to do when we're doing it is a volunteer. Exactly. Yeah. And basically, when you're a volunteer, uh, you work uh, 20 to 25 hours a week on the average. And I don't have to worry about coming up with the bid program. Right. I just call and say, do you have an opening? Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> and um, and uh, you get a, you know, you get a spot that has 50 amp electric 20, 30, and 50, depending on what you need. It has sewer hookup, water at the site, 
Uh, in most cases, you'll have your own little um, storage shed in addition to that. And, um, you know, it gives you a, a nice, in most cases, gives you a real nice free place to live for anywhere from, depending on how long that particular campground is open, anywhere from three months to six months. Yeah. Or longer. Or longer. You know, Depends. We, we've actually seen some campgrounds where uh, the the uh, park attendants are there year-round. Right. Live there year-round. So it varies. Here again, we can't stress that enough. It varies from district to district, campground to campground. And these are things that you'd have to research. Now, we'll get this out of the way right quick. I did find a website for those of you that would like to look into possibly giving a bid. And you can go to this website and it will help you get started. Just read very carefully everything in it. And then it has a toll free number that you can call to uh, get more questions answered. And that will at least help you get started. And then they can direct you where you need to go if that's what you want to do. Now, uh, in our case, when we and we have uh, helped out the Corps of Engineers in the past. Four different times. I yeah, think. yeah. Um, you know, to, uh, but, and it, and it always, benefits both of us. <laughs> yeah, it always seemed to work out just when we needed it the most. Uh, exactly. Whether it was because of funds or whether we needed a stationary spot to sit for a while to work on our trailer in our off time. Um, you know, there were so many things that came into play. And at times when we had health issues, we right. had to cut, you know, it just seemed to it work out. It just worked out. Where if, so. if I couldn't be at the booth, he could. Right. You know, it's, so it's, yeah. and vice versa. So it works out. Now, depending on the campground, not everybody will have the same experiences that we have had in the past. No, because I think each campground's different. Exactly. And there's so many things that come into play. One campground that we were park attendants at, which where we have most of the uh, um, bad experiences, was one where uh, we had very limited parking at the boat ramp. Very limited. And uh, there was only room for 18 pickup trucks and trailers, you know, once you launched your boat for you to park. So our job also not only was to manage the gate, but we were also, uh, our job was to monitor the parking. And if the parking got full and there was no other place for a truck and trailer to park, we would have to say, sorry, you'll have to go to a different boat ramp. And on two separate occasions, I actually... Um, had a, I mean, we're going to be open and honest. We actually, I actually had a, a couple of guys get out of their truck ready to take me on. You know, because I said, I'm sorry, there's no parking down there. You can't go. Uh, you'll have to go find another place to park. Um, so in those instances, you know, basically the way I handled that, I said, well, okay, if that's your prerogative. I didn't say it exactly like that. <laughs> but... Uh, We'll, uh, first thing my wife is going to do is call the sheriff and they'll be here within 10 minutes. And the next thing she'll do, of course, is call the Rangers. And let me remind you that we're on federal property. So any citation that you would get would be a federal citation, which can only be handled in a federal court, you know, and it never went beyond that. But yeah, we had a few that were a little irate because they were going to have to try to find someplace else to launch the boat. Uh, the problem that we would have with, at this particular campground, and it was a very stressful job at this particular campground because of this, if they went down and they couldn't find a place to park, if they happened to sneak by, <laughs> they would park in an empty campsite uh, with their truck and trailer, hop in their boat, be gone for four or five hours. Well, the problem with that is this particular campground during the peak season is also one of the most popular campgrounds in that area. And there was someone coming in that had that site rented. Okay, I'm tapping on the table again. Sorry. But uh, there was going to be someone, a camper, was due to come in, you know. So if the camper gets there and they can't park in that spot because there's a pickup truck and trailer there, then that creates issues. Other issues. Yeah. <laughs> other issues and uh there were at least one or two instances where it got so far out of hand because they were gone for so long that their rigs ended up getting towed and when they got back they had a really nice uh, federal citation waiting for them 
Yeah. So it can get pretty expensive, you know. Which, which didn't so, make them happy no. either. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just FYI. But, but, you know, but now that's probably the worst we ever had. Yes. Other, other times we would have folks that would come in uh, at other campgrounds that we've been park attendants at. Uh, and we've always worked at some in the past that have been very, very popular, very large campgrounds. But we would have folks come in that they had a certain spot rented. Then they would go to try to get in their spot and they couldn't get in their spot for one reason or another. Um, either their rig was uh, way too big or they had to, uh, uh, it was a little tricky backing into the spot, things like that. And then they would come back and say, we just can't make it work in that spot. Would you please move us to another spot? And then we would have to say, sorry, there is no place else to put you uh, because the campground is booked solid. Right. Yeah. So then we would have those issues, you know. And once in a great while in, in the ones that we were, we could find them a spot in a totally different campground right. that they could go to. But it's just the one that we were at had no other vacancies. Right. And we hate it when those kind of things Absolutely. happen. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it doesn't... Uh, I understand the disappointment. Yeah. I understand looking forward to this. And I understand it being a problem. Mm -hmm. But I don't... As a camp host, I didn't always have a solution for that problem. Right. And we've also had some folks come in and say, I got on my site, but I can't use it because I can't get my rig level. Well, that's and, where we say. And, that, and that's... Uh, <laughs> And that's, uh, that's why we did a video a while back about, you know, the things that, that uh, you need to carry with you just in case. Right. Or we've had people before come in and didn't realize that the only power available was 30 amp and they had a 50 amp rig and they didn't have a dog leg, you know, the dog leg down to 30. Fortunately, I had one that I could loan them, right. you know. But we don't have several. We just have no, one extra because we carry that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, when folks come in and say, I can't get my rig level, and usually these were, you know, there's been a huge boom in the RV industry of late for many reasons. And usually this was simply because they were newbies and didn't realize this other stuff that they would need to try to carry with them. But a lot of folks, uh, when they're coming into Corps of Engineer campgrounds, and don't get me wrong, there's a lot of campgrounds that have wonderful sites that are level, but a lot of folks think they're all going to be level and they don't, well, all they got to do is back in and let, hook up. Let's back up. How did we learn that? The hard way. Absolutely. <laughs> we learned we, the hard we way. We learned, okay, we're going to have to run yeah. into town and buy some more leveling blocks. This isn't going to right, work. Right. Same thing with the, the length of our power cord. Yeah. You know, yeah. wait a minute. <laughs> but you know, uh, you still have to deal with that and yes. you have to be kind and you have to be understanding uh, even when it's all your fault right you know right. and yeah we've had had those issues but now let's talk about the positive stuff oh yes the positive yeah, stuff. Well, that's enough of that let's talk about the positive stuff positive stuff is you normally have a great spot to park at mm -hmm. and being a volunteer this year at this particular in this region yes <laughs> In this particular region, you only have to work 20 hours a week. Right. I don't know how the other regions are. That would be something for you to discuss if you decided to volunteer. Mm -hmm. um, other positive things. You meet, you meet some really oh, nice people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, this other issues that we talk about is just a small percentage, yes. but it's right. still enough, especially if you have a sensitive conscience like we do. It, you it, know, it bothers and, you and when you, you can't make the people. whole world happy. Yeah, <laughs> that's all we want to do. We want to make everybody happy. So, so yeah, that, that's the thing. But we've met so many wonderful people, made so many wonderful new friends from being park attendants. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And here again, these are isolated cases where we just happen to have the particular gig at the particular campground where things could get uh, pretty stressful because so many people come to this campground, you know, and then we would have to deal also with some of uh, the day users that didn't want to pay their $5 for a full day of enjoyment, of at, enjoyment the lake. at the lake, <laughs> uh, little things like that. But mm -hmm. On the positive side, we meet so many wonderful people, and and we've had so many folks. Like we, one campground that we were at, there were a lot of fishing guides 
that utilize this campground, the boat ramp there to take their, their clients out, you know, to go fishing. And guess what? We were hardly ever without fresh, fresh right out of the fresh lake, fillets, fillet right out of the lake, yeah. <laughs> uh, crappie and stripers and man, and we even had somebody bring us uh, some trout one time. Yeah. Yeah. So, I you mean, know, so, uh, and, and so, you meet yeah. nice people and you yeah. get to talking to them and um, find out, you know, some of them have been camp hosts at other campgrounds, some national parks, some core parks. And you just get to know the nicest people. Yeah. We, like, as we've always said, you meet the nicest people at a campground. We hit it off, we hit it off <laughs> with one particular couple that had a uh, nice houseboat in the marina. And they invited us down uh, one evening to have dinner with them on their houseboat. And we'd heard them kind of talk about the houseboat. And we get there and this thing is 30 foot by 80. 80, I think. <laughs> it was like a mansion. Double decker. <laughs> It was a mansion. <laughs> and at the marina, uh, they were at a very corner spot, and so they, they had also uh, contracted to build an extra patio at the end of the marina. Uh, and we sat out on this floating patio, and of course, as all the big fancy boats went by, and of course, they knew everybody. They would wave at everybody, you know, and everything, and uh, it, it was just a wonderful experience. Right. You know, so there's so many... Uh, th Pluses. Th there's been a lot more positives the negatives absolutely okay now i want to mention it one more time i did find a website that you can go to that i will post uh, a uh, a link to that in the uh, description and also in a pinned comment which will be the very first comment you see in the comment thread um where you can go to this website and it will help you get started uh like i say read it read it carefully and there will be a number there you can call to to get more information but in our particular instance what helped us was we just happened to be at the right place at the right time uh, over three years ago. Right. We, we first started out. Mm -hmm. We were at a uh, Prairie Creek in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And at that point, we had, I mean, this was our very first spot we stopped at. It just and right as we had started our YouTube channel, too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And... We was, you know, we were newbies. We didn't know what we were doing, but um, there was no camp host. So I called the local office and said, okay, there's nobody here, what do I do? And he told me the steps I needed to take. And then a day or two later, he, he, um, I contacted him again because I didn't know how I was supposed to pay because at that time it was first come, first serve. Yeah. And he says, I just found out that our camp host pulled out. He says, somebody will be by to get your money. And I said, okay. I said, so you don't have a camp host at this time? And he says, no. I said, do you need one? And he says, well, I'll be out to talk. <laughs> and, <that's, laughs> and that's how we got started. <laughs> and since then, we had built a rapport with the rangers uh, in the northwest Arkansas. It's actually part of what they call the uh, Little Rock District. So anytime we need a place to go, well, uh, yeah. that particular time, we stayed there until time for the campground to open, and then we had our plans, and we moved on out, and we did all that. And this one particular ranger stopped at one of the other campgrounds that we were parked at and within the same system mm -hmm. later in the summer, and he says, well, how y'all doing? Have you thought anything about being a winter volunteer? Mm -hmm. And of course we said, oh, we got things to do, places to go. We want to do stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, but, but we might be interested. So he called us in August and he says, I've got an opening. Would you be interested in taking it? And we found out where it was and we hummed and hawed a little bit. And we said, yeah, we'll take it. We'll be there first of September. So that happened to be where we was at and we were going to do it all winter. Well, it worked out because we both had health issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then that C word happened. Right. So we had a place to stay, right. whereas other people did not. Right. And that worked out brilliantly. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. And it's just nice to know because we've developed such a rapport with these folks uh, on the Beaver, in the Beaver Lake system that, um, you know, when we get to the point where we feel it's time to stop traveling we already know we'll have a place to go you know right. and uh, that is nice so it's it helps if you if you decide that you want to cultivate a relationship like this with some particular 
district or some particular system that you like, you know, uh, develop that, uh, cultivate that relationship, and who knows where you can end up. You know, of course, I'm, like I say, I say that we know we'll have a place to go, but things can change. Sure. But uh, at this point, we feel like, you know, we feel like uh, things, well, things will be okay. Well, it was, okay. for instance, last year, as you all know, we were busy building out our trailer. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we're still not done. But we were to the point where we had to come back to northwest Arkansas from Florida. And we knew the rules that you can only stay two weeks at a time. Well, that wasn't going to let us finish our trailer. So we contacted them, said, this is our situation. Do you have any openings for a volunteer position? Well, in fact, they did. Yeah. Yeah. So we said, we'll be there 1st of July. Yeah. <laughs> and we stayed till the middle of November. Right, right. And that helped us get a bunch done on the trailer during our Absolutely. off time. Absolutely, you know? on our off dates. So, so there, uh, the, those are the, the pluses and a few little minuses. Now, like we say, we want to stress this. We can't stress this enough. Every campground is different. Absolutely. All depends on, now we've noticed, we've been into some campgrounds, Corps of Engineer campgrounds that are along rivers and places like that, where it's obvious that this is mostly a fishing area. Mm -hmm. And they will it's obvious that they won't have the same kind of issues that we had with, with a swim with, beach with yeah with a swim beach and <laughs> um uh and things like that you know where you've got a lot of people that get irate real quick you know because they don't want to pay the five dollars or they don't want to do this and don't want to do well that. they have one day for fun yeah and, and we understand that i understand that but and, we have rules but, to follow you know there are basic <laughs> rules and five bucks to spend all day on the lake with a nice picnic table and a you grill know what? And stuff that doesn't like that. seem like a lot of money to me but we don't get it but <laughs> Uh, we've been in, we've been through other campgrounds and we can tell the minute we pull in and we go through the gate that, Hey, this would be a nice, nice, easy gig here. This would you know? be an easy one. So, um, uh, we don't want to discourage anybody. No, 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 not at all. And so now we're going to go ahead and tell you exactly what's going on with us. I almost let the cat out of the bag. You almost did a minute ago. No, And I wasn't ready for you to yet. <laughs> I don't follow instructions well. <laughs> and this falls. This goes back to what we were saying a minute ago, because you know you, you build a rapport and 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 a relationship, and so well, when, as you all know, we're watching the channel. We had a problem with the transmission on right. our van on our tow rig, mm -hmm. and we got an extension from the Rangers. They were kind enough to allow us to stay 28 days at one campground when normally it's 14. Right, but and you can do that. If you go through the proper channel, you got to go through the proper channel. But you're only allowed to do that like maybe once a season or something like that. Anyway, so it's not a regular thing. So but. we did that, got the van back. It was mm -hmm. all working great. We went to our next spot over in Missouri. Mm -hmm. And that's when we started. And it was like, the other wait issues. a minute, yeah. it's starting to act up again. Yeah. Well, and sometimes you just feel like the universe is stacked against <laughs> you. <laughs> so not knowing how long we would have to be back with our mechanic to get stuff done to our, our, our van. And plus, and we wasn't sure that we could afford whatever was wrong. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> it's like, time. wait a minute, maybe yeah. we need to quit traveling at so, the moment. <laughs> so, yeah, we made a phone call. Yeah. And what we ended up doing is uh, we are park attendants again for a little while. Yeah. And... This is our view for as long as we need to be here, you know, to get things done. Now, like I say, the van will be back next week. It wasn't uh, as major as we had feared. And the van will be back next week and everything's going to be fine. But while we're here, we have a nice shady spot to work in. We have a beautiful view right behind and us. And I can go swimming every day. Yeah, and she does. And I do. Uh, and we got a beautiful place to ride bikes here. So, uh... We're going to go ahead and stay here for a while and work our 20 to 25 hours a week, which we work uh, Saturday, Sunday, and part of Monday is what we do. And, and, then, and they were gracious enough to say, because we told them about our rendezvous. Yeah. And yeah. we've got that whole week off, so no worries. Right, right. So we'll actually be hooking onto our trailer and going over to where the rendezvous will be held at Lost Bridge North on Beaver Lake. Uh, and last time I looked, there were four sides left. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> over uh, in September. So we'll be hooking onto the trailer going over there and hopefully we'll have it either completely done or all or mostly done. Mostly done would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Is that like he's only mostly dead, like yes. on uh, The Princess Bride? <laughs> mostly. Only mostly dead. I'm, no. I'm just, um, 
anxious to get mostly done. It <laughs> yeah. will never be totally done. We know that. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. we will always, Absolutely. somebody else will come up with a great idea, and guess what? <laughs> yeah, I know. So, uh, that's what we're doing. We're on a campground on Beaver Lake. A lot of you will be able to figure out where we are. Some of us you will some of you will some find of you us. already have. Yeah. And that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Um, and we'll be here for a while and we will be pulling out of here to go over to the rendezvous at Lost Bridge North. But that's what we're gonna be doing for a while, which will give us uh, more time in a stationary spot with a nice shady spot to work, running saws. I mean, and come stuff. on people. Yeah. Look at my space. And we're getting this for well, no, not we really get it for free. because we're working 20 hours a week. Yeah. Both of us. We both yeah, work the booth. Right. We're working 20, 25 hours a week, both of us, and this is what we get. Yeah. So, so it's not free, but. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's just hard to take. It is hard to take. It's, yeah. a, it's a bad thing, but somebody has to do it. So, you know, and then, of course, after the rendezvous, uh, we'll have to take care of a little bit more business in this area. And then shortly after that, not too long after that, we will be heading back down east again because we have another rendezvous coming up in February, February. back in Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got some places that we want to explore on down deeper into Florida that we uh, weren't able to do last time. Yes. So uh, we're going to be doing that. In fact, there are boondocking type spots maybe. Yeah. Yeah. That's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. So anyway. This is where we're at. This is what we're doing. Uh, check out that site if you're interested. If any of you have any other questions, feel free to put the questions in the comments and we'll try to answer them best we can. Absolutely. About being a park attendant. And from what we understand, many, many uh, Corps of Engineer districts are needing park attendants even now. Yes. In fact, uh, we've pulled into a lot of gates at places we've gone to where they'll have a big sign that says we need park attendants with a number to call. Right. So, uh, you know, there there is a need for park attendants, and we ourselves prefer to be volunteers. Yes, that's just it, us. It gives us more free time. Exactly. Right, right. So uh, this is what we're doing, plus we're now we're going to have more time, you know, to really concentrate on the trailer. We're going to show you what we're, we're doing. I've got some stuff coming in that I ordered that'll be in the first of the week, and I'm going to show you a new project I'm working on that has to do with our... Uh, our battery system and hopefully uh, it's an idea that I have and I'm going to experiment with it and we're going to share that with y'all. Yes. I'm done. Are and, you done? And maybe my bathroom will get finished. <laughs> the bathroom will get finished. <laughs> I swear. Women. I swear. <laughs> anyway, there's here's this kitty. Yeah, right somebody here. adopt him. Yeah, if I, there, he, there he is. See? Hey, Oscar. We called, we named him Oscar. No, we didn't. Melinda well, did. our daughter did, yeah. But he's a, he's a sweetheart. He needs a home. Where did he go? He went over there. Ah, there he is. I can barely <laughs> see him on my little monitor here. He's walking away now. Anyway, this is Bill and Deb with I Ride Tiny House Adventures. And you know what we're going to say? We're not camping. We're living. Y'all get out there and do some living. We'll see you again soon with a new project. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.